All yes. right, San Diego Land here. We got uh, Paperbound again. I'm Brian. We got Dan and what's Josh. Josh and of course Mitchell. Hello. Say hi. All right. Cool. Do a little introduction. Yeah. Uh, Dan is. Yeah, go ahead and uh, introduce yourself. Describe yourselves. yourself. Well, I'm, I'm white and I'm bald. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I'm, Long I'm, walks and pina coladas on the beach, <laughs> right? <laughs> and, uh, uh, I'm the designer and programmer on Paperbound. All I've right. Been doing it for a year and a half now. Josh, oh, I, I do environmental design or a bunch of the backgrounds for the game. I did a bunch of the books like Journey to the Center of the Earth or uh, Musashi's Book of Five Rings. Yeah, so okay. I make ugly things that are fun and he makes them pretty. Yeah, <laughs> all right. That sounds good. That's a play. pretty good explanation and we just play them. So, yeah. you know, it's a good combo here. <laughs> uh, sweet. So the, the game has been in, in production for a year and a half? Yeah. It seems like it's a pretty quick turnaround to go live. I mean, it's funny because um, depending on who you ask, like some people are like, "Wow, it takes that long to make a game." Other people are like, "Wow, that was quick." Yeah. Um, I can tell you, I've been working seven days a week the whole time. Okay. So that, uh, um, that'll do it. That'll do it. <laughs> and I'm kind of decide who I want to be. Yeah. Well, I pretty much picked the Soul Soldier because I like. He's he's large, but he's not overly large, and he's easy to find when I respawn. So, especially with a lot of dark backgrounds. Yeah, we've got you know, yeah, some of these cameo characters here, mm -hmm. like Wild for Fucking Melee. I'm still can get over Captain but, Canyon. <laughs> you know I, I might be the only one, but I really like Mumsy. Mumsy? Where is he? He's so whimsical. Mom oh, oh, there he was. Sure. Oh, oh, there he is. He'll be red. Yeah. I like the Guardian a lot. Mm -hmm. It seems like a lot of other people like that. Is somebody not picking? That was me. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, I was too engrossed in your stories. Scarab's running. Yeah. <laughs> I was actually trying to get the game mm -hmm. done in under a year, but they you know, oh. went a little long. Yeah. They, they always do. How many how many people are on your design team? Would you say like full time? Um. I, so, I, full time. Um, I guess I'm the only full time one. But mm -hmm. Josh put in a lot of hours, and Mike, the character artist, put in a lot of hours. Um, I like to say the core team is five. So myself, Josh. Mike is the character artist, Lacey's the other level artist, and then Chris is the music and sound guy. And they've all been a lot of passion into this game. Cool. And then you had, uh, who was the, uh, the, the music? You just said Chris. Yeah, yeah. it was Chris. Chris. White Noise Waves? White yeah, yeah. Yeah, back, back in the UK. Yeah, his, his name's Chris White, and, um... Oh, I guess we're... <laughs> I, 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 yeah. Oh! Um, so yeah, he's in the, so the team was mostly formed online. I met Josh and Lacey actually in person here in San Diego at a game developer's drink up at this oh. place called the Coin Op. Uh-huh, uh, yeah, yeah, over there in like, arcade by El Cajon Boulevard and... It's, uh, 30th in, like, North Park. Oh, yep. Yeah. Okay. They have a couple of them, actually. Oh, did you see that? Uh. Oh. <laughs> Is that you, Mitch? That are you the me. blue guy? Of course, I'm just of course you are. Me. Now one thing I've realized in a four-player match like this, yeah. sometimes it can be good to die because then you get your ammo back. That's true. I just like picking it up oh. from the ground. Oh, oh that was that close! I thought I got you that. that. 10 12. That was pretty close. I'm happy with my 7. <laughs> Josh with the 2. I got we've, you, we've, we were practicing just hitting the, the scissors back and forth to get the slash timing down. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So you got the achievement for that one? Yeah, we did. We did. We just yeah, did we, today. We noticed in that fact, afterwards. We, we counted three, two, one. We both threw scissors at the same time, and, and it was boom, back. boom, boom, boom. So this is the one where uh, Jesse got killed uh, five times in a row. <laughs> five times. It was glorious. Yeah. But do you have any questions about the music? Cause... Yeah, I'm just all over the place on these things. But um, I was going to ask, since Josh is here, uh, you said you were working on which books, environmental art? Um, I did Let's check some of them out. Book of the Five Rings, Journey, uh, Book of the Dead, and Inferno. Yeah. A lot of the five. <laughs> a little bit of everything. Well, most of them. Well, last year, Lacey was in school, and mm. so she had a... And I, now I know what that's like, because I'm in school this semester, and I have, like, virtually no time. Mm. So I, I was just lucky to have more time available than her. And now, we were, we were trying to figure this out. This is what we guessed to be a dragon eye after yeah. a long time. Okay, yeah, I got it. <laughs> All right, yes. Cool. Because I'm looking at, like, it's like a nose bridge on this side here, and I felt pretty proud of figuring that out. Some people were like, that's the eye of Sauron. Oh, well, that's the first <laughs> thing we said. Yeah. The first thing we said. 
So, and then this map is super tiny. We uh, figured that out pretty quick, but yeah, definitely like this it, one. If you yeah. notice, it says like it gives you best for number of players. Mm -hmm. That's typically based for on any the number, size. and then that's two. Yeah, yeah. for sure, so, definitely two. The Book of Water and the the crushing map in Egypt <laughs> um, are yeah. like two favorites for doing one on one tournaments. Okay. Mm -hmm. Or something know. like maze are gonna probably take forever. Yeah, we yeah. use the maze level for uh, so capture yeah. the quill. Yeah, that's my favorite. Yeah. Capture the quill. Ah, I've had some sweaty matches. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it tense. I like uh, the fact that that's no longer a PlayStation controller, by the way, because we were like, I guess we gotta get PlayStation yeah. controllers. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. no, thankfully not. Um, so yeah, the game's on PS4 and Steam, and you can actually on PC you can go in the options and change it. Yeah, I noticed that if you press F1, you got keyboard layout. And then uh, whatnot. Yeah. So well, we've got all these Xbox controllers, so it helps out. Oh, I should not throw that scissors. <laughs> gotcha. Oh, nice. It's a duel of fate. Oh, it's Who not a duel of one? fate. Uh, whoever. Is. You've got six. Why are we always fighting each other, Mitchell? Fucking Perry. Oh, yeah, there you go. I got your back. Oh! Mumsy. <laughs> oh! No one ever expects the bomb. You, you <laughs> My bombs are not quick bomb, enough man. for you, sir. Well, good luck getting over here. Oh! <laughs> oh shit! Oh. Yes! No! 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 I, <laughs> I was going to the wrong portal. <laughs> Yeah, the, the team, like I said, I met Josh and Lacey here in San Diego, but the rest of the team all kind of came together online. Mm -hmm. Oh, Most, wow. Mostly through this website, IndieDB.com. Uh-huh. Okay. Where you can go check out a bunch of indie games, and they have forums and stuff. And so I met Chris, the music guy. He's in England. Um, so I never actually met him in person. Yeah. And so Mike, is in, the character artist, is in Oregon. Yeah. Oh, cool. So is, does he do all the characters? or, or All the non-cameo. Like uh, all the non-cameo. Right, right, right. There's a, there's a lot yeah. of cameo characters. I know you had some questions about the cameos. Yeah, I mean, I was just wondering how you got in touch with those developers. Kind of send them, get it, <laughs> yeah. email them and say, hey, we'd love to use your character. Or... So, a um, bit of that, so, like half of them I knew, knew personally already, and the other half were just kind of reaching out to mm -hmm. them okay. digitally. Mm -hmm. um, one of the, so for example, Monaco, the, right. that developer's in San Diego, and so I yep. know him personally, and I think he's showing up tonight. Sweet. Oh, sweet. Oh, sweet. Yeah, yeah, we actually have it queued up to play downstairs. <clears throat> oh, nice. <laughs> But that's cool. When you told me that, I had no idea because I knew the Behemoth was here. Yeah. With Castle Crashers. And but... Behemoth, they have a QA branch called Research oh, Centaur. Okay. And I actually that's who... contracted with them to do the QA testing. Right on. Oh. Cool. Uh, Cards and Castles is local too, right? Uh, was. Oh, was? Oh, uh, yeah. So Cards and Castles is a mobile game that's kind of like a cross between Final Fantasy Tactics and like Magic the Gathering. Okay. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, the developer for that game was in San Diego, but he recently mm -hmm. moved to Missouri. Oh my. Oh, yeah. That's <laughs> quite the change. Yeah. Well, it's like uh, Razor is moving from Oceanside and Northern San Razor, Diego. Like the mouse people? Yeah, they make the mice, the keyboards, and the tablets. I didn't know they were Oceanside. Yeah, yeah. They're local. Well, they were. They're moving to Irvine come like next year, which is unfortunate because, you know, there goes that cool thing I can say. Yeah, uh, Razor's local. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> kind of local still. Uh, but. So, do you guys have a favorite map? Uh, oh, gosh. It's hard to say. I, I, how can we unlock the Inferno ones? We have to Just play five playing. matches. Okay. I was going to ask, what made you pick these books? Yeah. Are there any specific inspirations? Oh, that book, definitely? Or um, So, the first one, I believe, was Journey to Sun and Earth, and I just wanted sort of like a classic adventure tale. Okay. And um, if you look at the art, it has a lot of kind of <clears throat> intricate line work, and that was inspired by the original artwork in the, the printing from the 1800s, because mm -hmm. they had, the way they did the art then is like, to do with shading, they would just have like different densities of lines rather than like... The smooth stuff you get today, so mm -hmm. we kind of. I think it was like a they're like lithograph presses or something. Yeah. And the artist name was like Edward Rio. Yeah. Um, He's a French dude. Because yeah. Jules Verne was also French. Um, mm -hmm. And then, Skull Kingdom was inspired a bit by like Nightmare Before Christmas. I was gonna say that's what it looks like. <laughs> yeah. Um, and this is the one book that's uh, not a real book. Okay. Oh. Okay. Yeah. I didn't um, check that. It Damn. was also inspired. By you can't check it out. It's not a real book. Ah, all right. Is that also book fun checking it out? Yes. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, also, 
when I did the very first prototype of Paper Bound, I had an artist that I used to work with at High Moon Studios do the stuff. His name's uh, Jose Flores, <laughs> or he goes by Emroca, his middle name. Okay. And he has this weird sort of like Mexican Day of the Dead kind of art style that he All likes right. to do. And so I wanted to kind of continue that a little bit and yeah. influence this book as well, which yeah. is the book that Lacey drew. Okay. The, the Skull Kingdom? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then I wanted to be, you know, a little bit around the world, get some different cultures in there. So we got the Book of Five Rings from Japan, the Book of Dead from Egypt. And actually, so I had, I was like, I want to do an Egypt book. I want to do a Japanese book. Yeah. Um, and I was at um, an an well, WonderCon, I think it was. Uh -huh. And I was talking to some Which guys. Which is coming up next week. Yeah. And th <laughs> this was WonderCon last year. Yeah. And I was just like, oh, well, you know, I'm, I've got these book ideas. I'm not sure exactly. I wasn't sure exactly which book. Like, at one point, I was like, this will be, I don't know, Cleopatra. Yeah. Um, and yeah. these guys knew a lot of books, and they recommended Book of the Dead and Book sense. of the Five Rings. And I was like, oh. I looked them up. I was like, yeah, those are good. Nice. <laughs> I, like never, I never heard of the Five Rings, but definitely the Book of the Dead is a big one. So uh, yeah. Before, we called these, like, the ninja maps. Or, you know, oh, <laughs> <laughs> real simple beta maps. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. So, I mean, we got, like, the dragon, the fire, okay, water. I was a little curious how this one goes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> one of our favorite troll maps, we for won. sure. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, this is a, this Thematically, is a, how yeah. this fits in the book. Of All I can do is jump into the middle and throw my scissors left and see who it gets. Yeah. Just, but... The way the Book of Five Rings worked out is it was a book composed of five smaller books, and those were actually the titles of the book. Okay. And so I was like, boy, what do I do with that? And it just made me think ah. of the teleporting. And I tried a couple of different things. At one point, I, I had some test maps where they were just like individual little portals that you could warp through. Um, and that turned out to not be as fun as just being able to have the whole outer limit just be one big <laughs> teleport. Yeah, it's, so, it's, yeah, it's pretty crazy. Sometimes <laughs> I love just getting the infinite scissors. That's every time I've spawned, I just do this, <laughs> and then I oh. get, a, and then I don't know which scissors are mine anymore. Yeah. Apparently not those. <laughs> oh, this is that double kill. That was yeah. crazy. Oh, it's just dangerous to jump across the middle anymore. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, am I? Am I? Am I get, oh, 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 oh! Oh, I took it from you. I surpassed you. Yeah. Oh, you didn't Man, see that Mumsy. Oh, I ran into the scissors. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I almost bombed myself, too. Wrapped around. We're trying to get you. You're not going to get me. Oh, oh, I was trying to throw them straight up that way because I knew what you were going to do. <laughs> you you know. saw You're going to come from forward. the bottom and whip around. <laughs> Classic. Well, yeah, that was I think it's pretty battle. funny watching the replay. Vibrate when you die. Yeah. <laughs> First time we saw this, we're like, "Is are we controlling those? Are those AI?" No, no, that's a replay of us being really crappy at the game. And one thing, the winner can actually rewind and fast forward. Oh, oh really? Oh, learn new something new every day. With the triggers. What happens when you reach the end? Does it restart? Uh, they just keep kind of running infinitely. I noticed that because when we we were playing downstairs and I had to walk away for a minute, my guy was just doing this. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, so this like carnage, points. and then, so yeah, now that's the end, and they just kind of, and then we're just hanging out in the bottom. Yep, <laughs> not doing, not doing much of anything. Um, so yeah, and then Inferno was also kind of mm -hmm. inspired by some of the art that Jose did, and I was trying to match it to a book. Okay. And Inferno seemed like a good one because it had sort of like lava and yeah, the page like it was like the world was coming apart with the pages ripping. Nice. And um, what what made you think paper books? What was so the original idea I had for Paper Bound was a multiplayer game, but then after a little while I started I was just playing with it around with the level editor and I was like, hey, you know, you can do some cool puzzles with this. And so I actually started a single player version of it. Oh. And um let me back up. So um, that guy Jose, yeah. uh, I was looking at some of his stuff for, for a sort of inspiration. He had this really cool painting of all these little demon creatures coming out from behind like a scroll of paper and I thought it was really cool looking and so I took that idea and then mixed it with my experience growing up in kind of a small town and then leaving and uh -huh. came up with this idea of there being a stick man Eddie who would like come to life be a magic dust and then he'd be stuck on his little sheet of paper you know and he'd get bored of that and then he would go looking for adventure in all these old books yeah and so it's a little bit so he's no longer bound to the paper yeah. yeah. It's kind of like a triple entendre. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite kind. 
And, um... Oh, double kill. Um... <laughs> I killed the wrong person at the end. Um... But at least it's close. Nine and seven. Josh, did you, but you say you worked on this book? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I can see what No, you're no, saying. no, I was gonna ask, I wanted to ask you, what are the objects? These are mushrooms, Oh, those are definitely, right? well, it says Mushroom yeah, Kingdom, right? Or mushrooms, something? yeah. And I don't even really remember how they ended up looking like this. <laughs> the first, like, rendition I sent Dan was, like, a almost a copy of one of the guy's, like, pictures oh. from the book. See, there was, like, this little boat pulling up on the shore, and there was these giant mushrooms in the background. Yeah. And, uh... So that's the background looked exactly like that, but the foreground like went through this metamorphosis to look like I don't know, it looks like mussels or something. I was gonna say sausages, like yeah, meat. Or something. I thought it was kind of fleshy. I thought that guy. looked like a closed eye. Yeah, on the right there. But one thing we noticed, Mitch noticed this: if you if you fly by and you switch, it changes <laughs> due to your personal gravity. <laughs> I'm not even touching it. I just <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> they used You're just so forceful. <laughs> that was that was so. This is actually probably my favorite map. Oh, the music is just, I when you said adventure, this is exactly what I think when I heard the soundtrack on this one. As far as art goes, I, I like this one better. Mm -hmm. like, <laughs> out, out of the levels that I did. I really like what you painted up for the Cave of Mysteries. Uh, oh, the first platforms. level I did for you? Yeah, that one's really good. Yeah. And that one's interesting to look at if you saw like the development of it, because it started off being very kind of monochrome and black and white, kind of resembling the uh, original book. I was just talking, that's why you are. Shh! <laughs> Don't take this from me. Victory. Don't take this from me. Uh, a solid oh. zero. Oh, okay. And I'm just going to spin in circles now. So you had an original art book that sort of started the theme of this, or...? Well, was, you know, this is basically... Yeah, <laughs> we looked at images from the, oh, okay. the center of the Earth. Oh, right on. The Brendan Fraser film, yes, I know Yeah, that. yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's where I got all my inspiration. It's Brendan really. Fraser. Fraser. <laughs> look at this. Oh, 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 oh damn! <laughs> oh, damn. Okay. I, I, almost, I, was, I was getting cocky. I was going for the triple kill. Oh! Oh! Nice. Um, Nobody gets a triple kill like the level. Itself. But I decided oh. it'd be no. nice to add a little bit of, of color. I think it was it me asking you to put some more color in it. Yeah, yeah. And it it helped it. I think just um, yeah. Oh yeah. Read sure. a little better because there were like so many lines when these are flying back and forth. That made yeah. it a little hard to read. So it was interesting, was kind of that process of learning what to do for the art for um, of such a fast-paced game. Definitely. I find it, some people I know when they first start playing and they die and they respawn, it's really hard for them to see their, where their characters are. Which is why I picked the white Skull Soldier, because he's really easy to see with these darker backgrounds. But I think it's something that, whenever I watch a replay of us playing, I'm always watching my character and focused on him real hard now. Because I'm so used to playing the same guy over and over. Is there somebody you always pick? You mean? No, I don't mix like, it around. You like to mix it up? Keep um, people guessing? Yeah, I like... So I like Mumsy, I like Skull Soldier, I like Eddie, and um, sometimes I like the Guardian. Uh -huh. You get him in his like, purple outfit. <laughs> dress, dress him up. That's... I really like John V, but uh, two people are already red, and I don't think you can change his color. Or, yeah, yeah, her color. Now she's red only. Yeah. Yeah, all the cameo, oh. well, most of the cameo characters have only one color except the Monaco guy. <laughs> <laughs> gotta learn Tricks how to use that gravity. Guy. Yeah, it's tough. Uh, oh, I was right on your heels for once. <laughs> Dude, I need to play more video games. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, my f so I've been claiming that I that I'm the champion of the world, but I know it's not gonna last long once this game's out in the world. Yeah. <laughs> and already, um, I played a friend of mine who he's been playing on PlayStation for a few days now. He's already gotten all the trophies. Oh wow. And uh, he he beat me. Yeah. I have to say I was tired though. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> so I'm, I'm so wanna, I want to rematch. True... I want to rematch. So when we have, uh, you know, the the official tournament one day, you'll be there to claim your crown. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. We'll have a big, big tournament. You guys have any other uh, things you want to ask me about? Yeah, plenty. Uh, I was gonna ask you about. Uh, I was 
played a few games, like, I don't know if you've played and Yet It Moves. I did play that, yeah. Maybe. But, like, you know, in those games, like, Gravity Inversion is kind of your only, like, leave the ground option. But you kept jumping this one, which I guess is... Is there any, like, specific reason for that? Or, like, you know, it's just, it's a fighting game, you should be able to jump. Um, so there are a couple of reasons. One is, I actually find it useful, um, because it has a different arc to it than when you just flip gravity. And it can help you, uh, reach spots nicely. Um, also, I like to, like, sometimes just quickly jump over people's head and then like come back at them and, and sword and that only takes one button press as opposed to two with the yeah. gravity. Yeah, yeah. Um, also, at a point in time, um, there were kind of more, like you couldn't always invert gravity, there were kind of like you had to have something close to you rather than like all the way across the map. Oh. And so, and, and, in, and also in the single player campaign, the jumping played a lot bigger role, but now that single player campaign isn't there, but I kept it around because I find that I like feeling of jumping and moving tactically here and there. That brings up an interesting question that we wanted to ask, was a single See, player... Like, right here I can hop between these platforms. Yeah. What, what, uh, did, are you thinking about bringing single player back? We always thought that it would be a very fun platformer to have this kind of play style. It's, it's similar to V, but it's much faster, I think. Yeah. Um, so at the time, it was actually more of a puzzle platformer than an action platformer. Yeah. Okay. Um, but I think if I were to go back to it, I would put it more in the action realm. Sure. Um, when you got the engine. Yeah. The only thing is, right now, there are just so many platformers. Sure. And I might want to just... Sorry, I think that's me. It's all good. You oh. son of a bitch. Got me killed. Dude, look. No! <laughs> I'm in second. I'm getting rid of this. <laughs> oh, I dropped right into that! Oh. That's the best. I totally meant to do that. And, uh... <laughs> really using gravity well really comes into play in Capture the Quill because getting through the map quickly is really yes. important. Yes, yeah. Well, there's uh, there's another one. I think I'll, I'll point it out after this battle. The but we can, of wind. Yes, with the clouds. Yeah. I, that so one you can go. He's wind. bad at finding the holes between. So he just, doesn't know where the hole is, huh? Yes. <laughs> you know, I'm young, you know. <laughs> He's got him in every area code I've heard. Bad reference. Yeah, that's Look at all these pretty high here. Source like all these uh, freaking scissors everywhere. I'm just gonna stock up. How did I? Cool. Oh, oh, you didn't see oh no, I did not see that coming, man. Ah! <laughs> oh, you got through the hole. GG. Yeah. Oh, wow. wow. Super cool. close. Um, yeah. So I'm not answering a lot of questions because I'm too busy. No, it's it's <laughs> okay. We're having a good time. But, it's fine. But, <laughs> um, what concept even like a in Smash Bros? I mean, for you compare it to that, just for like the general like. It's like arena Smash fighter Bros. kind it's of thing. Multiplayer. Um, but about like uh, in their like in melee of adventure mode, like you fight the other characters on their stages, something like that is a little bit of a story to it. Like you might fight Mumsy on one of the Book of the Dead maps. Or that you know I've heard you know I've had suggestions to also do like a Mario Kart style circuit <laughs> and stuff like that. <laughs> little speedrunner style. So that's definitely something that I could see about putting in an update. You know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it, I, think. It, I think it'd be it'd be a lot of fun maybe to learn a little, some of the maps as well, just to see an, an, more of an introduction. Because it, it throws us in, and we played a lot of, of couch co-op games, so we're pretty used to it. But uh, it, I think a little story behind it. There's such such rich development, like with the the arenas and the music, is just really draws us in. First time we heard that heroic theme, we we're like, oh my god, are we gonna go in some? Is there like Caesar telling us to live <laughs> or die at the top? It's crazy. So. But this is the one that we played Capture the Quill on that wasn't the maze. And it's just like, got the quill, whoop! Got the quill, whoop! Yeah. So. And then me bouncing between the clouds. Because he couldn't figure it out! <laughs> <laughs> but I wanted to ask before we got going on this one was when, when you chose PS4 and PC, what were, you, what, what were your console choices? What made you choose those platforms specifically? Um, the big thing about PS4 is just with the tech I was using, it was easier to bring it to PS4. Mm. I do want to see about bringing it to Xbox One as well. Mm -hmm. um, but it works well on the 360 controller too. Yeah. So. You're talking about like an engine for it though? Like mm -hmm. if you build it in something else? Yeah. To on Xbox? Okay. Um, cause I, so it's kind of ironic, but um, I made the game using something called XNA, okay. which runs on PC and Xbox 360 actually. Huh. Um, had trouble. I was trying to work out a deal for 360, but that didn't. That fell through. Okay. Um, but on PS4, there's sort of like a port of XNA called Mono Game, 
<laughs> okay. Um, that works on PS4, but to bring it to Xbox uh, One, I'd have to bring it to an engine called Unity, which probably a lot mm. of people have oh, yeah. heard of. Um, and awesome. that'll probably take a couple <laughs> months worth of work to, okay. to make that happen. But it okay. might, for those people that are stuck on the Expo, on, they might <laughs> see this game. Maybe. No, yeah, I can't no promises. make promises, okay. but uh, it's something I definitely want to do. Sure, sure. Well, it definitely works well, so that'd be cool. Um, and then, obviously, PC. I mean, sure, would you build this on a computer? Anyway? Yeah. So yeah. it makes sense to Reminds. keep it there, yeah. <clears throat> and it's what is it going to be going for when it comes out on $10. Steam? $10. Do- that's I think perfect. Price point. I think that's ex- <laughs> excellent. Yeah. See something yes. like Samurai Gun off sale, $15. I don't know why 15 seems like... I don't want to buy it price for some reason. Yeah. Ten's like, yeah, I'll get that. I feel like I wouldn't play this online as much as some other games I have, but when people are over and we're on the big screen, this yeah. is the game right now. You know what I mean? So it, $10 is phenomenal, yeah, and that's like, outstanding. So that's that's good to hear. I mean, and you divide that by four, it's like 250 a person. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, exactly. that's a good way to look at it, too. Especially if you yeah. pay me back for it. <laughs> <laughs> this is my copy. What are you talking about? Yeah, well, <laughs> all the other games. Else, <laughs> Speedrunners, Bro Force, Monaco. Gotcha. <laughs> Go down that list. Castle Crashers. Yeah. Are you guys fans of Nidhogg at all? Yeah, yeah, we yeah. Tried that yeah one we were out. talking about that. Throwing some swords around. Yeah. It's mostly one of us chasing after you, Eric. So we can't figure it out. <laughs> oh, yeah. Getting the the parrying and the sword play is I really tough that, in that. So that yeah, we've got it uh, down there. We we'll play it later. So the trick is, if someone gets past you, you don't chase them. You run the other way. Oh yeah, because then you respawn. Because you respawn. Oh, yeah. you respawn. Because I'm thinking when it's your turn to go, I jump over them and I keep going, <laughs> and they can't catch me. But obviously, if it's not your turn to run, then you're screwing yourself or respawning. Was uh, there for the book of for the, the Inferno, Inferno where yeah. you're just like, I need to make a level that's hard and can kill the player, because <laughs> or four of them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, uh, so, I, Rib Crush is the perfect name, by the way. I died <laughs> so many times between the ribs. Yeah, like I didn't realize until they like, move a happened. little bit. Yeah. yeah. And I was just looking for ways to you know mix it up, and I thought oh, some environmental hazards could be cool. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. It's a good way to put the it. The first one um, was actually Pages of Pain. Okay. And oh, yeah. Pages of Pain. I like that. Is that what it's still called? Yeah. Okay. How's that? Yeah. The original name I called it the Grid, but. Um, oh yeah, that's, that reminds me of Resident Evil when he's got he's got to jump between those lasers and he gets sliced up. <laughs> oh god, like a cube yeah. almost. Uh, yeah, like a cube. So, I, I had <laughs> sorry. You know, I brought that level to actually. I went to a local GameStop and I had okay. it set up outside during one of the like midnight launches. Been for, there, done that. And um, some guys played that and they were having a great time. I was like, oh, hey, cool, this is a level to keep. Although a lot of people found it pretty, pretty tough, and so. Mm-hmm. Um, probably not the best first level, which is why this book is locked when you first get yeah. the game. Is like I don't want the really difficult levels to be people's first experience. So like five maps will be enough to be like okay, they play the other ones, yeah. they get the feel for you it get there, an idea. and but it doesn't take that long to get through five matches, and then you can if you want can go for, go wild. Um, and then Rib Crusher was the second. Mm-hmm. Um, this map for this book. For this book, yeah. yeah. Um, and it, what's funny is I had grinder drawn up. I just wanted mm. something cool. <laughs> and grinder. I think that was the one where like I was thinking about cutting it because it was oh, super it's punishing. It's so hard, man. It's but like but the then map Josh drew it up. Mm-hmm. And then also you had to keep it. Playing, that's part of it. And then also I was playing with my roommate, who's who's really good at this game. He and I were always like neck and neck. We yeah. just played one on one in that map, and we had a good time in it because you know we've been playing for a while, so we're pretty oh, good yeah. at the game. Of course. And it was a challenge for us. And it was it it is a pain. That's really fun. Yeah. yeah that, so. that one always gets me. It's it's hard because of the spikes. You jump off, and you, you're gonna go the other. You're not gonna go straight. You're gonna go down or what have you. Yeah. And pretty much every level here, I you know I drew on paper before I. Okay. Um, made it in the game, but I have a pretty, uh, I think I think a pretty good level editor that I put together that I used to just go and click around, add geometry, and then you can slap some images on top of it, and it actually comes when you get it in Steam. You can go in I a folder. That. And you can yeah, I saw that in there, right next to the paper bound. It's got paper bound editor exe. And so you could actually like load up the existing levels and screw yeah. with them. Oh. And is that only local, or if you play oh. online, will so, they be able to have the level as uh, well? So there, there is no online play. It's local only. Okay, okay. So, well, that there, that gets right into my cross-platform question, which means I don't have to ask it. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. 
makes things a lot more simple. That's so I gotta have average. real friends. You do. What am I gonna do? Oh wait, <laughs> that works out for us. But yeah, yeah. I know not everybody is in the right situation, but um, unfortunately, not every game. Everybody's gonna be able to play every game. It does yeah. have the AI though. It does, yes. Yeah, so. Which is still pretty hard. Which is, I think the AI turned out pretty well. Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't like. It was a, like a last minute thing. Yeah. Like, I want to add something out there, you know, for yeah. for the single players, and so that they can have yeah. fun with. And so I tried to make them fair and also as human like as I could. Okay. Um, so they miss shots every once in a while, whatnot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they miss shots and they don't always have perfect timing. And okay, good. <clears throat> so it's not perfect dark, and the uh, <laughs> the crazy bots are out there to get you. The Einstein bots. But, uh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I did the AI the, like the last week before finalizing the game. Oh, nice. And I slept and, and like I, four hours a night. That yeah, week. <laughs> well, and I noticed just this this last patch or two, you have the Xbox picture for the controls, which I was like, oh, good. So yeah, this, this is an addition. Josh, has anyone ever told you? Did you work on the environment app for this mm -hmm. one specifically? Anyone ever told you like? Waited for a long time, an aha moment that the objects are actually paper in the middle of the screen. Like, is it, it took us about five or ten minutes to figure that out. Oh, for some reason. It's I mean, we're, we're looking at look books at and we're going into a book, but it's <laughs> yeah. not like the levels are so animated. It's hard to figure out like I'm playing through a scene in a in a book or something. Well, it's crazy. Is you get so hyper focused on your character. Right. Yes. Right. yes. <laughs> like, like that text at the top of the page. Exit through your page share to win. Right, it, it, when it first appears, it's in the middle of the screen. Okay. And it goes up because okay. when I put it just in the top, people Nobody wouldn't saw it. see. Yeah. Wouldn't see it. Right. I have to admit, we didn't. We had to figure it out. And it's like, what's? Why is it staying there? Oh, <laughs> I gotta go there. Get that guy now. <laughs> I at one point it was more towards the bottom. Okay. I think, and it was literally like a tenth the height of the screen, so pretty pretty tall text. Yeah. And still, people would like not see that because they were so like, gotta get them, you know. <laughs> yeah, I've missed it a bunch of games like during this session where I'm like, oh, it's over. Like, <laughs> <laughs> why am I not spawning anymore? And and that's why I also added. That you notice that that slow mo moment that yes. happens. Yes, that kind of very ninja gun. <laughs> ninja, is that a game? Oh yeah. Samurai gun. Oh samurai, oh, samurai gun. gun. I'm so sorry. Like the slow mo. Oh <laughs> man, I'm gonna get some play. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> That is there. Uh, doesn't happen every kill. Right, happens only, only on the win condition one. Where yeah, they're gonna, they're gonna okay. win. <laughs> it's super pronounced though. I noticed. So it's yeah, yeah. The idea was like, to like people were having trouble. And there was like I said, they're so hyper focused that oh, they yeah. didn't notice when it happened. So I'm like, maybe if I slow down everything, <laughs> yeah, that'll get people's attention. Was, and no. Was that hard to put in? Uh, not really. Not really. That's good. No, it definitely. I like it because it make it's a very badass feeling when you're yeah. like. And then you're you're responding to a knife or, or scissors that were thrown right before the slowdown, and you're like, oh, I'm gonna get them. <laughs> yeah. and, and you start when it slows down, and you see the people. You start thinking, like, planning out yep. what you're gonna do when Definitely. it speeds back up. When we first saw this in the pages, when we're picking which map to play, and we're like, oh, I wonder if those are gonna move. And then we spawn, we're like, oh god, yes, they're gonna move. <laughs> so, so the grinder. Punishing. Yeah, the grinder. <laughs> There's a part of me that just likes to stay in the middle and do this. I don't know. That's a pretty good tactic. <laughs> People seem to get me, or they just throw scissors at me like I just did. Thanks for the scissors. I don't know why it's taking me so long to notice the stand, but how did you make yourself disappear? Oh, he, oh, he doesn't AFK. have a controller. Oh. So if you don't do anything for a while, once you get killed, you won't respawn? I like that. Okay. But if I hit a button, I'll pop back in. That's good. I call that bathroom mode. <laughs> <clears throat> Uh, did, did uh, I know that a lot of the books are obviously inspired by real world things, excluding one. How much of the level design comes from those inspirations? Um, so, well, the, the one thing that, the first thing that comes to mind is actually funny because it changed since the original inspiration, but the clouds map uh -huh, uh -huh. was the first one I had for the Book of Five Rings, the map was just called Japan. <laughs> but it, <laughs> And uh, it had like you know, like the, the Japanese style roofs. So, yeah. Like, where the clouds were, those were roofs. All right. But um, that ended up not actually working out so well for gameplay. So, we, but we took that arrangement and just changed it to these round, fluffy clouds. And then <laughs> it, it worked a lot better. It reminds me of a uh, Nidhogg map where if you stand in a cloud too long, you fall through oh, yeah. it. You ever thought of doing hazards like falling hazards? Um, there's a lot of stuff yeah, that could breakaway done. hazards, I guess they would be if you stood on them too long. Oop. I think that's a low battery thing. 
Well, somebody just tried to start just to screw it. Okay. <laughs> I was it's gonna fail out because I'm never gonna add a negative on this level. Uh, <laughs> See if I can come back in uh, you, from negative did you, one. Did you well, like a directive zero. on this kind of a level, Josh? Or just like, hey, can you make something really, really, really mean for the players? No. Well, some of the levels, Dan would have an idea. Like, I want this level, like the Earth level. He had a lot of really specific ideas. But sometimes he would just give me geometry and be like, this is gonna go on the Japan book. So I would make something up. And I'd do a little sketch and send it to him. And, Kind of back and forth sort of thing. I like this, but change this stuff up. Yeah. yeah, back and forth. And I don't know if that was like. Sometimes artists are fearful when, like you say, just like make anything. Yeah. They want some kind of direction. I don't know how you felt about that stuff. I also, but I liked. <laughs> I wanted everybody on the team to feel like it was their game. Definitely. And so I let everybody have their freedom to do their part of the project. Um, you gotta have a lot of trust in, in your crew to put stuff through and be able to take criticism, I think, because this is a big part of being able to do it. Oh, yeah. Uh, no! And I think the Japan levels were definitely the hardest for me because I had to learn, like, a new style for every single book. Oh, yeah. I was going to ask you about that. Is, have you done anything, any of the kinds of styles you worked on in this game no. beforehand? No. <laughs> <laughs> so now you have a larger, like, repertoire of things you can pull from, maybe. Yeah, definitely. And my natural drawing style is really kind of liney. Oh! oh. <laughs> I'm just, my goal is now to make this go as long as possible. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, oh, yeah. I'm just trying not to fall in the lava, so it's hard for me to concentrate. It's alright. Just right. fall in the lava and then you can talk. Yeah, so <laughs> that was like awesome how we clashed yeah. right after the slow mo ended. When I was a kid, oh, I wanted to so be like close. a comic book artist, so my, the way I naturally draw is super like cross hatchy with just tons of line work and no yeah. color. Okay. So this was a totally new experience for me, but I, I never learned so much in like one year of my life. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's the thing. Awesome. Like you learn by doing. Definitely, yeah. definitely. And how did you two meet about this project? How did you so reach out to Josh? Or there's Josh um, a local group called the IGDA, which is International Game Developers Association, which sounds weird because it says local, but they're, they're local chapters. Okay. okay. All right. <laughs> uh, um, and so, local IGDA just they had what's called the drink up event where. You, uh, at the coin like arcade, up, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was just, you know, for our local game developers, and uh, I was there, and I was—I don't remember how the conversation came up, but I was oh, at the I time. Was, I was looking for work, and I asked my buddy John. I was like, "Is anybody here I should be on the lookout for?" And he was like, "Yeah, there's two guys. One is E. McNeil, and the other—I think his name is Dan. He made this crazy game <laughs> where the stick figure runs on the ceiling and like plays across <laughs> the levels." And I was like, "Oh, that sounds pretty cool." <laughs> Steer clear of him. No. <laughs> yeah. So I met Dan. I didn't even know he was the guy I was looking for. And we just chatted a little bit, and we ended up kind of hitting it off. And you gave me an art test. And yeah, I guess I passed. Cause <laughs> and, that, and that was the cave, right? Huh? That was that was the cave level, right? Yeah, the cave level. Is that where they have on the back of the matchbooks? You have to draw the fox, and you send it in. And <laughs> no, not quite. Okay. So you mean, this was like your your first piece of work on this game. Was yeah. This oh, game here? he sent me. Uh, it was just was like that. Look, just the geometry, but it was like black. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, you could just tell where the shapes were, and I yeah. did like a rough sketch. And you know, it was a, the first level took a long time because I was trying to figure out what he wanted, and he oh. was trying to figure out what I was capable of. Yeah, there was a lot of sure. back and forth in that. Yeah, yeah I, can, I can imagine the first time is always the hardest. So first was like more lines, and it was less lines. <laughs> and it was like add color, and then add like the jellyfish. So it really went in a bunch of stages. What about the books themselves? Who who did that art? Oh, uh, that's Pages my. And my awful 3D modeling, I guess. <laughs> so when you're a small team, you just kind of got to like go yeah. with whatever you can. Yeah. I, I personally like the swoosh in when you start the game and then it goes to the top of the menu. Well, it's a, it's a good Boom. thing. It's like really nicely animated to cover yeah. up my... I mean, the, the books are really just like a box, you know what I mean? Sure. Yeah, and then Josh, but he also did the cover textures for them as well, except mm -hmm. for Lacey oh, yeah. did her book, A, a Skull Kingdom. A Skull Kingdom, yeah. Um, but yeah, and then uh, there's another guy that I used to work with, uh, who's on the other side of the country, that did the animations for mm -hmm. the characters and for the page flipping, which oh, I was okay. really happy with. That really, just having that nice page flip animation yeah. really sells it. Yeah. 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 yeah, you know you're looking at books. There's no <laughs> question. <laughs> it was interesting. I think I watched one of his uh, vlog things about his animation where, specifically for people like turning around really fast, how he like changed how that was animated so it wasn't just like janky like someone suddenly running the other direction like you can tell when someone's turning around by like a couple of frames mm. which vlog was it was this the video i made 
I was was it maybe, about paper bound? It was about no yeah 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 sorry paper bound and it was about how the characters when they're yeah uh, so I yeah I put together a video about the the animation tech so how like so how many turn around it might have been your video then yeah 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 specifically that like and so like you know the the animator will animate it in something like a program like Maya if you're familiar with that mm -hmm. and then I get that and it's a series sort of what are called keyframes yeah that, like it's like point flash time. is a similar yeah and so if you just Snap to those keyframes when you slow down, and you know it, it just cuts between them. And so I put in some tech to actually blend between them, because um, the characters in the game, for the most part, are animated much like they are in a 3D game like Call of Duty or mm -hmm. anything like that. Yeah. Um, even though they're just simple 2D characters, but they have this whole skeleton setup that's used to animate oh, okay. them. And so that blending stuff I did allowed a couple of things. It allowed. Um, to, like I said, if, when you get that slow-mo moment so that the motion is nice and smooth. And then also it allows you to layer different animations. So like, as you're running, your legs will keep running and you swing the sword, your upper body will be doing the sword animation and your lower body will still be playing the running animation. And then also it blends between the animations. So like, when you hit the ground, you'll play that like, I'm landing animation. Like that. And that blends smoothly into the running animation. If you, oh. Can you catch your own ink bombs? You can. Yeah. I did not know that. And your teammates can catch it too, which... I did not oh, know Oh, well, we don't play much teams because yeah. we hate each other. <laughs> yeah. That, that was something I put... Team. Yeah, that was something I put in there. I was like, yeah, that could be fun, but I'm not sure anybody ever really does it. I honestly... That would be amazing to have someone like, please, throw me the rock and just... <laughs> yeah, I'll catch it and I'll chuck it at you kind of thing. That'd be, that'd be interesting team play. One thing I wanted to ask you about the, the character design, actually, and you were talking about the skeletons. Do they all have the same hitboxes? The hitboxes are the same. Oh, that's good. Interesting. That's good. Because I was afraid my big ass head <laughs> would be in the way of some bombs. Or so. this guy. Yeah, <laughs> that guy. Or, um. Uh, the. What's his name? The. Goblin King is huge. <laughs> I know what he's talking about. I'm talking about Master John here. Yeah, they're a little bit bigger. But not. I like substantially larger. And they all have the same reach. I know on some of the Let's Plays, people think that Juan has like a shorter reach because he just like punches. But, oh. Uh, I so. honestly, the first time I played Skull, he, I thought that this was a, uh, a pen. Uh, what was it? A fountain pen. Because it, it has that same oh, yeah. kind of look to it. And I was like, oh yeah, it's a fountain pen. We're writing on paper. It's a fountain. No. <laughs> it's a spear. <laughs> That's cool. Did you have any other questions, Mitch? Yeah, Eddie and Jasmine. So oh, yes. These kind of seem like your main characters. As yeah. Far as, like, what, what's your kind of like a backstory for them? Are they just adventuring through other books? That, um, just what they're doing? Yeah, well, it goes back to that single player idea I was running with for a while where Eddie was going to like awaken on this sheet of paper and go through the books, and he was your character in the single player okay. game. And other characters would just be people he encounters as he goes through these books. Um, and then, you know, the single player campaign got cut. Mm. But Eddie remained. I like him a lot. He, he's yeah. actually the one character that I drew the original design, <laughs> but then my the character artist made him look way cooler than I did. Yeah. Um, Not just a stick figure. Here's a stick figure. <laughs> well, it's, it's funny. Like you take that idea of like a, like a little stick figure dude, and it's amazing like how many variations on that you can actually make. With, oh like, yeah. Changing the shape of the head and its proportion to the body and for, you know how long are the arms and legs. And, the ninja is based off him. Yeah, Doesn't he have like Ninja Eddie. Astronaut uh, Eddie that we didn't use. Oh, yeah, yeah, we like, saw the, the reference photos for that. And we were looking for it. We're like, oh, I hope it comes out later. Because we really wanted to play the astronaut, just have him float around no, the stage. Just, <laughs> Mike drew a lot of stuff <laughs> that of stuff. never made it in the game. Oh. And a lot of it I didn't even see until later. I'm like, when the hell did, when you did this, this come from? <laughs> <laughs> this really I would have cool. allowed this. <laughs> you could spend hours looking at his Facebook page with all the oh. stuff he's posted there. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's really cool. That, that pretty much wraps it up. I think yeah. anybody should, if they're looking for a couch co-op, this is definitely one to get. When did, What's the release date? Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah, this 31st. Tuesday, the 31st. 31st of March. Well, That's exciting. Can't wait. Well, yeah, it's, yeah. Been, it's been great. Thanks for Thank being on. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks for having us. This is great. Nice to play with you. And uh, definitely see that playing. you are good at your own game. <laughs> yeah. We're glad. We were like, we were practicing, too, so we wouldn't be terrible. So, But that's it. So let's... All right, See what everybody else thinks. Woo!